I'm going to be ranking Overwatch 2 Season 5 Support Comp. First up is Kiriko. I think Kiriko is probably the best support character to be playing at this moment in time in this new meta. And it's a very versatile character. Everybody should be playing Kiriko. I can't think of a situation where Kiriko doesn't fit in. Kiriko can Suzu, which that saves you so many times. I can't even count how many times I got saved because of it. Kiriko can play with any character, any tank. Makes the teams better. Every pro team at this moment is playing Kiriko. Don't get me started on her ult. Crazy good. It wasn't as good as it was. It got nerfed a little bit, but it's still good in the pro leagues when there's two Kirikos. Whoever gets that ult first wins the game. That was the whole that was the whole thing. Who can ever get the most ult charge to get the Kiriko ult? And plus, if you're a DPS type of person and you want to get into support. I think Kiriko is good. Like, Kiriko can play a little bit of DPS. Kiriko is also very well with dealing with Anna, which she's a very big problem if you have nobody to deal with her, and Junker Queen. Junker Queen did get nerfed a little bit. With Kiriko, you can completely shut down people's ults, everything. Like, that shouldn't be happening. Kiriko is a very versatile, very annoying character to go against because it's Pretty much everywhere. You're constantly teleporting to people. You're constantly throwing kunais at people. It's going to piss them off. With all that, I'm going to put Kiriko in S tier. Because that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. Next up is Zen. Zen is difficult to say. Yeah, it, it can heal. But it's mostly job is to do damage. Very good at countering a lot of tanks. When you throw the Discord Orb on some people, it completely shuts them down. Which, that's very good. With Zen, if you're very good at Zen, Zen is a very high tier character. Um, not a lot of people can play Zen. Even in low tier. Some low tiers can play Zen. And it can mean the whole world in the game. Zen can knock a motherfucker back. He gets sweet chin music. Shawn Michaels on him. It's not more versatile than Kiriko. Because Kiriko is probably the best versatile support legend at this moment. Zen is very good. I don't think you can play him on all maps. I feel like some maps he's de definitely better at. I don't think you can play him every map. Like Kiriko. But the maps that you can play him on. He's probably the best one for that map. Because he's very good. He's very good at destroying tanks. Dealing damage. Hurting them. And letting the tank kill them. Zen's supposed to sit in the back. Zen ain't supposed to run out. Do all that. He don't have no movement ability. I've been there before where I couldn't hit a shot with Zen. And all I did was kick him to death. But very fun when you do that. Out of aggressive support. I think Zen is the best aggressive support. Because... If you're very aggressive, if your playstyle is very aggressive, Zen is the way to go because he's the best aggressive support character. He's everything you need, everything that you want, everything that you will have. Also, one thing I want to say with Zen, Zen can control a match. If you have a Zen, you change the way, the direction the game goes, which that is very game-changing in a way. But if they can counteract that game change and they know how to counteract a Zen, then Zen will be useless. And in that case, I'm going to put Zen in A. Next up is Mora. Mora is my, personally my favorite. Mora is very good in mid to low ranks. I'll say that. If you want a legend to climb in and support, Mora is the way to go. Mora is 100%. Mora is the easiest support to climb in. The only downside is there's a lot of characters that can just completely shut her down. Cassidy is one of them. You get hit with a grenade, you're dead. You better pull out the world's smallest violin. There's a lot of times where Mora, I played Mora, and you can completely dominate with Mora. Mora is a very dominant character. Very hard to shut down if you're very decent with her. The ult that Mora has is good, right? But it's not better than everybody else's ult. Some other ults is way better. Zen's ult's better. Kiriko's ult's better. A lot of people's ults is way better than hers. It can heal, but if you want to have a healing ult, Zen's way better. There's multiple other ults that's way better than hers. And then you want to talk about damage. There's multiple other people that has damage ults that's way better than hers. It's more of a line where you can heal multiple people at once. Well, ult is very iffy. I don't really like Mora's ult that much. Mora in the high ranks, you keep seeing it less and less. Mid to low ranks, I say, yeah, if you want to climb up rank, Mora's the way to go because Mora is very hard to counter it in the low ranks because they don't know what the fuck to do. They're running around with their chicken with the head cut off. Like, they don't know what to do. Mora, I'm going to put her in B. Uh, there's a lot of pros and cons to her. With this new meta coming along, I think there's a lot of better support characters in her. But if you're in the mid to low ranks, I feel like she's the way to go. If you want to have a steady climb up. Actually, I'm going to change my thought. Me thinking about Mora. Zen is, pr is S tier. If you think about how versatile and aggressive he is in if there's a good Zen on the team, because I've been paired up with a lot of bad Zens. I don't think Zen is very, very that good, especially in low rank. But when you get to high, and medium to high, that's 
game changing with Zen. He can change the whole game, and some people can't even bounce back from it. So I'm a I'm a change Zen to S. Next up is Brig. I think Brig is a very good character for like blocking. If you want to block a character, when you go against uh, a Reinhardt, Reinhardt can just completely hit through your shield. Your shield does nothing to him. Brig is more of a keeping someone alive with their shield, like keeping an Anna alive, because a Brig and an Anna is very good to go against. It's very hard to counter, because a Tracer can't kill the Anna. A Somber can't kill the Anna. It's, it's the perfect, perfect combo. With Cassidy being buffed, if you keep him alive, it can turn the tides of a match. One thing I'll say about Brig, Brig is more of a amplify someone else and help your team out, not her herself. If your team doesn't have an Anna, or doesn't have a Cassidy, there's not much that Brig could do for herself. I know sometimes you can go in aggressive and get kills, but her main objective is to protect people. There's nobody to be protected, for example, a Pharah. There's no way I can protect Pharah. And if there's not an Ana, there's someone else type of healing, like Mercy or something, I cannot, I cannot heal. Then, that's when you switch off a of Brig and find someone else to heal. And that, scenarios like that, Brig is a no-go. I'm gonna put Brig in C. She would be higher up on the list if there's people that you're amplifying into the game, but if there's nobody, you're kind of playing solo, and her heals is not the best. There's a lot of better heals than her. I've been playing some games where you go against a good Brig, and it's hard to get close to, but if you kind of stay back on Brig, and you play more of a far type with Brig, you can shut down the shield. As soon as her shield's dead, she's dead. Ho, 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 Mercy. A uh, Mercy, I think Mercy is one of the types where you can play her in any comp because there's not a lot of matches and maps where you get fucked up on with mercy unless they're targeting you you can amplify a Farah because Farah and mercy is still a very good combo mercy and bastion is a very good combo a lot of good combos if you can pair her well with a lot of characters in the low ranks mercy is, is the best everybody has horrible aim in the low ranks they don't know what to do they can't shoot a shot they can't even shoot a cane on the wall they can't do a lot of stuff if she's in the air and they can't shoot a shot, you can just fly around all the damn time. Mercy's the way to go. But in mid to high rank, they know how to actually go for the Mercy. They don't leave the Mercy, just keep flying around. Because a lot of people forget about the Mercy in low ranks. They don't go against the Mercy. It just keeps everybody alive. And that's how a lot of people lose the game because they don't go for the Mercy. How many times I see in chat, go for the Mercy, go for the Mercy. But in the high ranks, they know how to counter a Mercy. A lot of teams just go targeted the Mercy. I would say the thing with Mercy... Her utility is not that good compared to other supports. Because you think about Mora's utility, Briggs' utility, Kiriko's utility, and Zen's. They all have multiple utilities. Mercy's only utility is to revive somebody. And in that case, there's not a lot of places where you can revive somebody. Because I see a lot of times when someone dies, I can't go in because they're all surrounding it. And in high ranks to mid rank. They know how to, if you're going to come down and do it, and they know how to stop it. Low ranks Mercy can just fly in, revive somebody, and keep doing it. They're like, what just happened? How did that guy back alive? They don't know what just happened. Put Mercy, I put her in B. She's a very mid to rank character. She's very solid to pick. Not, no, nothing negative about her. It's it just, there's better support than her. But if you look at everybody, a lot of other supports, and see what they bring to the table, they bring a lot more to the table than more in Mercy. Next up is Ana. Ana is the most picked support as of right now in Season 5. You must see her every game, either on your team, on the enemy's team, or even both. I think Ana is, a lot of people value her grenades and a lot more other stuff than her actual aim. Because in low tiers, their aim is very bad. They can't hit a shot. I played a game yesterday where the Ana was right next to me and I needed to be healed. And the Ana was still fighting. Anna's not supposed to fight. With Ana, a lot of people have horrible aim with Ana in the low tiers, mid to high tiers. She's very, very good. Especially with the grenades and all her utility. She got a lot of utility. I think she's probably one of the best utility supports. So, as of right now in this meta, she's S tier. Anna's very good at throwing her grenade at people. She can literally change the whole outcome of a match just by her grenade. Not counting her nano boost. I did. I, I know I nano boost a lot of people, and they just go in and get a lot of kills and stuff, and I don't get credit for it. A lot of people be like, yeah, look what I did. The tank be like, look what I did. Look what I did. But I gave you the nano boost. Also, what I like about with Anna, she, you can play her in from far to mid to even sometimes even close range. Jamming onto this one is Lucio. With Lucio, Lucio is more of a high tier character. A lot of low tier people don't know how to use them. Mid tier don't know how to use them that much. That doesn't mean that 
there are people that know how to use them because I, I came across a lot of people that can use them and it messed me up. I still have nightmares because of what Lucio did to me. He heals in a radius, which I think that a insta boost to heals is way better than just overall just keep healing around. But Lucio is very good with coordination. If you have people with mics and they actually know what you're trying to go for and if they have a certain strategy they're going for, Lucio is the way to go. You can enable a lot of people in a lot of situations. His ult is very good now. Don't get me wrong. His ult is very good. 3,000, 9,000 health. He broke the health bar. Like, that's crazy. One thing I say what's good about Lucio is he can push enemies into your team. Like, for example, if a Sigma has a very aggressive angle on you, and you come around and push him into your team, that Sigma's dead. Throw roses over the Sigma grave, because he's dead. He's very good at destroying angles with Lucio. He's a very, it's like water. You can't really hold him. He's all, he's always everywhere. You can't really have a sustainable game against Lucio. Certain, like, Reinhardt, if they try to come in on you, you can hit them back. A lot of characters that try to come in and try to hurt your team, you can also knock them back. And it's a very good character to stop a lot of engagements. For all them cases, I'm going to put Lucio in A. Next up is Baptiste. Baptiste is very well at working with a lot of comps. I don't think he's a guaranteed pick, but I think he's very good. With Brawl compositions, he's very good. I don't think Baptiste is a bad character, but whenever you go against comps, there's other supports that can do his job but way better. Then you need to play for them. But the thing is, he can keep you alive. Which, that's very good. He can counter so many ults. Which, that is very game-changing. think Baptiste is alright. There's a lot of support characters that can do his job but better. Baptiste, I don't think nothing can negatively affect him. I don't, I don't see nothing that is negative about him. I also don't see nothing, like, very positive that push him up to one of the higher tiers. So, in that case, I'm going to put him into B. Realistically speaking, I feel like you can push Bap into an A tier. I can see that. I see him going B and A. But with me, I'm going to put him in B because I feel like he's a very solid line because there's nothing really push him up to one of the higher ranks unless, like, you say his saves. We can save you. A lot of people playing the Legends up in S tier, it can hurt a Baptiste's chances of being played. And when they're playing one of the best supports to play, Baptiste kind of gets left into, like, the bottom of the barrel. Last is Life Weaver. Life Weaver received a buff. Maximum ammo increased from 70 to 80. His shooting is fine. His damage is fine. But his support is... His healing is kind of weird. Yes, you can save a lot of people with Arissa ult. You can fly the Arissa up. Save a lot of people with the Life Grip. To low to mid ranks, he's not very playable. When there's a lot of other people that can counter him very bad. And a lot of people don't like to go against Life Weavers. I, I see multiple times whenever you have a Life Weaver on your team. And the, the superstition is when you have a Life Weaver on the team, that means you're going to lose. With Life Weaver, even with the update, I think that Blizzard knows that there's a problem with the character. That the character needs to be buffed. There's a lot of problems when you see with it. I think Life Weaver needs to be put into D. Yeah, he, he has some moments. His Life Tree is not that good. I'd be standing in the Life Tree and still dies. When there's someone that people has better ults in him, better utility than him, better healing than him. He's get outclassed in every position. There would really be no reason into playing him unless you're playing like a dive comp and they get too far in and you can pull them back. And in that case, I see him being played. In all these other cases, I don't see him being played at all. So I'm going to put Life Weaver in D. So that was my support tier list for Season 5 comp.